Hey guys, welcome back. We are now on part two of our Airship Enterprise build and we're looking at some photo etch. This is the photo etch from our helicopter kits. See, these three are all the same and there is one here that is different. It is much larger. It is a five star pinwheel and we're going to be using this one as our propulsion unit for our ship. So let's actually take a look at these guys right here for a second. Before we delve into the parts, let's take a look at the instructions. This is what you get on the back of the box. This is the most complex one. Most of them are just slap the body together and you're done. So pretty good. If you have magnifiers and very nice set of tweezers, this is everything. I have nine kits. I bought four, I have nine. So most of these came with two helicopters. One came with uh, three helicopters, you see. There's an extra one right here, that guy. And then we are really wanting our blades. These are all the blades. Most of them, again, are the same. You can see a four-spoked blade. There are tiny, tiny little parts on that tree. It's clear, it's hard to see, but yeah, parts. Where my finger is, those are landing gear. Difficult to see, but they are there. There are also little winglets on uh, either side of the blade. So yeah, very, very, very tiny parts. We are mainly going to be focused on this kit right here. This is the one I showed you the instructions of. Very complex compared to the rest. You've got winglets, you've got missile launchers, all kinds of stuff, but we mainly want that right there. And now back to the ship. I am currently cleaning up a bunch of parts, right now focusing on the masts. These are part of a two-piece mold, so along the center, you get a nice little line of plastic here, and I'm just scraping that off with my hobby knife. You could use sandpaper to do this, and I think I did in some areas where I couldn't get the knife in there. I just prefer this method. However, doing this, you do run the risk of flattening out any curved surfaces. I just ran the knife along either side of that flat spot to re-round it. I'm working on the top of the deck now, drilling out windows. These six little square windows I initially drilled with my pin vise here, and then I had to go back in with my Zacto and carve them square. Those are pretty much done. I also went in and drilled out little holes there for those uh, I'm going to call them smokestacks, so you get a little ambient light going up through them. This piece I drilled out and cut out all those insert sections there. Luckily those had dome shapes at the top, so it was easy just to take my pin vise and drill them, and then go in back in with my Zacto and remove the rest. I went back in after that and had to file them to get everything all nice and straight. We'll be showing this off in a moment because I haven't done any work on this piece. And now we have all the holes drilled in the tops of these recesses. Just going in there with the pin vise. Really easy. This plastic is very, very soft and thin. Now I have to remove the rest of that section with my Zacto. I'm cutting as close to the edges of these as I can. I'll make two little cuts and then I will remove the middle and then I'll go back in with my Zacto and remove the rest. If that's still not good enough, I have files. So I'll just file out any excess left over. And here we are removing the excess I have left over. You may notice the band-aid on my thumb. Uh, never cut towards your thumb. I knew I shouldn't have been doing it. Did it anyways. Cut my thumb. And also, by the way, don't, don't do this. See this? Don't do it. Cut towards a flat surface. This is just asking for getting more cuts on your fingers. Never do this. And all of our windows are done and our inserts cut out. Everything's been filed and sanded. Everything is nice and square. And this one right here, we were just cutting. I left holes in the front because this is at the front of the ship and to make it look a little different. And here is what that piece looks like on the deck. 
all cut out, all ready to go. Doing a little bit of detail work on the hull. You can see our rudder back there has those nice sections where it's connected, but there is plastic in between them. So I went and I cut that out just to add a little bit more detail. Now I have to go in and cut the other side to match that one, and I'm just carefully scraping the plastic away with my Zacto blade. It's very thin, came out nice and easy, but yeah, just a little bit more detail. And here's what it looks like with the plastic removed. We have it removed from both sides now. And here's what it looks like with the hull together. You can see it, the rudder now looks like it truly is a separate part of the ship being held on by those three little sections. I figured out why the deck wasn't sitting flush on top of the hull. If you look here, we have a shelf with little divots above it. Now that's fine for the center. But if you look here, three divots at the end, or the stern, and three at the bow, those are popping the deck above that railing. You can see when we put it in here, that railing is not sitting where I want it to. The top of the deck should be flush with the bottom of the railing, and that is not going on. So what I could do is I could sand the ever-living crap out of the deck, but nuts to that. I'm just going to cut those stupid offending tabs off the front and off of the rear and be done with it. I cut those tabs off and I had to sand a little bit on the edge there at the front and at the rear. But now the deck sits exactly where I want it to. Let me just get it into place. You can see that is where the deck should sit. And here up at the front, it sits nice and flush as well. And back to our rotor blade for a moment. You can see those over there, those are missile launchers. I'll be putting those on the deck. I don't have 1 through 50th scale cannons, so missile launchers. I figure Sid would if he could. And our photo etch. I will just be attaching this photo etch to our plastic with a couple of drops of super glue. Super glue works great for photo etch. I'm using a brand new Zacto blade to cut our photo etch. Always use a new Zacto blade. Also, I'm cutting it on a piece of marble tile. This is just a sample from the store. If you use a hard surface, it prevents the possibility of slipping or bending the photo etch and ruining it. Any sort of hard surface will do. I've seen people use glass, uh, bathroom tile, anything like that. I've now got a basic coat of primer on the hull, mainly for light blocking under there. I also have our ship wheel mount right there. Just a couple of pieces of styrene slapped together. So I'm going to be talking about mixing paint here, except I don't do that. I actually found a couple of airbrush ready paints in my collection. Didn't know I had them. Looking through my paint, found them. I have a beautiful chocolate brown, which will be going on the hull and on our masts and on our ship wheel. And then I found a really nice ochre for our deck and for those pieces there. I'm just uh, showing the paints off here. I also went over here with a light gray primer because the chocolate was not showing up on the black. Getting some color on the hull now. This is our chocolate brown. Just putting the base coat on right now. I end up adding two more coats to the hull to get it nice and even. And two coats of the ochre on our deck. We have the deck painted. We also have all of these pieces painted. Now I can start thinking about the lighting. You can see right through those windows. And if we put our LED behind there, not only could you see the LED, but it would be very, very sourcey, almost like a spotlight. I don't want that. The effect I'm going for is more of a diffuse light. So I've cut these pieces of styrene and I'll be slipping them in here so we get that nice effect going. For the larger pieces, I had to build these light boxes here to help diffuse the light. You can see, just built that, 
and we slide that piece on top and we'll give it a little test here. So now it doesn't look like there's just one giant light bulb in there. It actually looks like the whole room is being lit. See on the sides, you can show it up in front there. That is the effect that I'm going for right there. Our light boxes are done. These are now attached to the hull. We even have our ship wheel in place. So now I'm going to mount the LEDs. I have three little LEDs here and I'm going to be just mounting them in there with some super glue and then putting some black paint on the back to help keep the light out of the hull. I've now glued the two hull halves together so we have part of a boat. Yeah, it's all together now. Unfortunately, I got glue into our rudder, so we'll have to recut that out. But it's together, starting to look like a boat. Doing some test fitting on the hull just to make sure everything lines up properly, and it does. I really like where that railing is sitting there, and up in front as well. Everything's nice and square. While I had the deck on there, I thought I'd test fit the mass. And that's about how tall they'll be. So this is starting to look like a ship with a minor exception. That wheel should not be there. Also, I forgot to paint this little guy here, but I will, and it'll go in right there. We now have a coat of gloss clear on the hull and also on the deck. And our LEDs installed, you can see them there. Yeah, I did a test wash up at the front here. Be adding multiple washes to the deck to bring out all those details. So it looks nice and shiny with a coat of gloss. And I used this stuff here. It's just Delta Gloss Varnish. And I used a brush. No, normally I would spray this on because you don't want to get brush strokes on nice smooth surfaces. Since this is wood, if you see a few brush strokes, it really doesn't matter. It looks like wood grain. Fortunately, all this seemed to level properly and I can't even see one brush stroke. So pretty nice. Time to do a little bit of scratch building. We need something for this ship to land on. Some skids for it. So I took some cocktail straws, painted them up here. I needed the straws because I needed something hollow. From these, I created this little U-shaped thing here. This is what the ship will sit on. Also, I need somewhere to run my wires out to the base because I don't want to put a switch on the boat itself. So those will go somewhere about there. These will get painted. They're not going to be black. And I'll have a nice hidey hole for my wires. All of my wires have been soldered into place. A very easy setup. Lead to lead, ground to ground, and then out through the bottom. Since I will be lighting this with a 3 volt coin battery, there is no need for any resistors. And that is what it will look like all lit up when everything's said and done. And here are all our pieces together. Did get some paint on our skids. Also added some detail at the end, just some end caps there. We'll be weathering this and adding a little bit more detail so they don't look as bland as they do right now, but they are ready to be mounted. We also have paint on our teeny tiny little rocket launchers here. These need a wash and just a touch of detail paint to highlight some sections. Did get my bowsprit painted and it's just sitting right there. But that is where we're going to call it for this week, you guys. Next week, we will not be doing much. Uh, I have some family obligations, so that's going to require most of my time. I don't think I'll have any uh, set aside for modeling. But next time, we'll be getting this ship together. We'll be working on the base. We'll be working on the rotors for those masts. So I want to thank everyone for watching. I want to thank all my new subs. I want to thank all my old subs. You guys are equally rad. And until next time, you guys take care.